Hey, sports fans. Coach Nick here. I had to use my computer mic for some reason. My other good mic uh, refuses to work. Gl uh, weird gremlins, glitches. What's what? What else is new? But welcome. Hope everyone's good uh, and healthy and all that stuff. So, oh my goodness, my hair. I got out of the shower. I didn't really brush it that well. But anyway, uh, it's been a little crazy. Forgive me. I thought I was ready and I had to get some of the stuff with Lucio all squared away. I think I got that done. Have you all had a chance to look at the plays? Um, uh, that I did. And look in the description. There's a link. There's an unlisted video where you can watch the plays and see uh, what I'm going to describe and uh, diagram because I can't really use the NBA footage in the live show. That's what the NBA wants. So that's what we'll do. So um, you can watch it really quickly uh, or while you're listening, opening, opening another um, another window. If you're on a mobile, I don't know, switch over there for a minute while I talk and then come back. Uh, but it will help you get a chance to get a handle on what I'm going to um, diagram here because it's a little bit complicated, a lot of stuff happening, but it's basically the Iverson cut. So what is an Iverson cut? Why do they call it that? Well, you know, when Iverson was playing, uh, Larry Brown kind of invented to some degree this, this action, which, um, you know, in my mind's eye, thinking about all those games I'd seen before the 90s, before Iverson got to the uh, Sixers, uh, you know, it wasn't really a common thing I had seen uh, too much. So, um, you know, it's worth being, you know, giving Larry Brown the credit for um, coming up with it. So, um, first of all, you all can hear me. Good. <clears throat> we got to figure out what's going on with my mic, but we'll figure that out later. But anyway, what, how's everyone doing? Everyone's good? Sorry about the little mix-up, but um, hello from France, John Doe. Uh, all right, so let's get into this, shall we? So the Iverson cut, you know what I thought maybe we will do first is maybe I'll use the clipboard and I'll draw, I'll draw it first. And so you can kind of see it by hand and then we will, um, I'll show you the actual Lucio stuff that's, uh, you know, diagrammed automatically. So here's what we're going to go. So this is, by the way, a, a really cool app that, um, let me move this over just a little bit so it's centered. Um, and then let's do this. Hang on for one second. Sorry. Uh, okay. So let's go to this, this thing. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you a snapback version of this, where it's obviously if you threw it to Iverson on the wing and he could just go and score. That's that's all easy, and that's that diagram would be over pretty quickly. But I wanted to show you some of the things that we've now gotten out of this. A, how to what well, they've gotten on the end of this, and then also how they started, which is different as well. All rooted in the Charlotte Hornets out of bounds plays, which I happened to notice uh, yesterday or today uh, when I was going through Adam Spinella's uh, YouTube channel, a uh, friend of the breakdown, a guy I've known for a long time and a really great basketball mind. He started to uh, you know point these out that they run this on the out of timeout plays a lot, and uh, so I was looking at it, going, "God, that's a great idea. Let's use this for the show today." So here we are. Um, does that all make sense so far? Let me go back to the comments. Are we into? Are we digging this yet? What? No audio. Oh, shit. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay. There is no audio. Of course there's no audio because I didn't add that to that shot. Give me one second and I'll add the audio and we'll be very happy. Wow. Uh, I really wish I understood why my mic doesn't work because it's been set that way for years. I never had to change it, but whatever. Okay. So I will fix it. Forgive me. Now watch. I'm going to go back there. 
Bum, ba, da, bum, bum, bum. Audio. Okay, you can hear me. Great. Sorry. So let me go through that one more time just so we can all, uh, you know, get this right. Wow. Live, uh, live uh, internet. Okay. So you have like your point guard because AI was usually what, basically your two, right? So your point guard has the ball. He's bringing it up. AI would be here on the wing. And uh, they would put like the four and the five on the elbows and the three on the opposite corner. So the four would kind of step up a little bit. The five would step up a little bit while AI cuts across an AI cut, uh, Iverson cut, and the one would give it to him. Now, it's an interesting catch here because you're looking back toward the, you're looking this direction to catch the ball, right? But then you got to kind of flip back around and you have to be able to attack. But it kind of works that way. It kind of gets to give you a chance to rip through and get by your man to the baseline while this guy clears out. So this whole area is open. So that's the Iverson cut itself and how it basically works. And that's what you'd see if you go back and watch those Philly teams. Uh, you'll see them run this a lot and a uh, little pet play by them. And it's a great play to run. So are we all clear now? We all have the audio. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, cool. So um, that's where we're at now. And um, now I'm going to show you what Charlotte was doing with their out of bounds, out of timeout plays using the Iverson cut initially. So let's now go back to the first one, which we're calling the straight. So you can see this. Um, and now here is remember the Lucio thing is cool. They show you the 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 the, uh, the lines, but here's another cool thing they added. Now I could take away the lines if I want to really quickly, and I could actually even draw on top of this now. I believe. Uh, or no, uh, yes. So now I could, here's where they are. I could now I could draw on this if I wanted to, and then he's going to cut across here like that, right? But let's let's go back and we're going to animate this. So we'll let we'll let the uh, actual app animate itself. Let's put the lines back. Okay. So let's see how this goes in sl in uh, super slow mo. Hopefully, are you ready? So we're going to hit the play. So there is the Iverson cut across. The one is going to hit him, okay, a little early. Then the one is now going to go to his left and then come off that five and snap back for the pass. Okay, did you see that? Let's watch that again. Okay, so here comes the Iverson cut across with the four and five screening. Then the five steps up and sets that snap back, which is a beautiful play right here, okay? And so this is what, so what, because what happens is, is everyone's going to be looking at, um, I can actually do this. Let's do this. Let's, let's use this. Everyone's going to be looking at this guy right here getting the ball, right, from the one. And so a lot of times the defense will shift that way, and it allows the one to come here and then snap back off that five's pass. And then two could string that dribble out a little bit this way, and then boom, hit him right back here for the shot. We saw this with Cleveland. Uh, the, the, the Cavaliers run this a lot with Iver when uh, LeBron was there for like J.R. Smith or something like that. And it was a great little play. Uh, in my memory serves, LeBron took him all, would go almost all the way down to the baseline. And then th this five here was probably a little bit more over here. And then J.R. was coming around like to the wing to this area. So the, the pass ended up being, you know, um, the pass ended up being from LeBron here. LBJ would pass it, you know, around there. And J.R. Smith would be cutting that way off of like uh, what what's his face Tristan Thompson would be would set the screen around there and then Tristan Thompson can slip this and then they can hit him so that was the play they run so that's the straight version of this when you're talking about um, you're talking about um, the Iverson the uh, the snapback Iverson so actually I kind of like it without the lines do you you know the lines kind of get a little bit uh, complicated so uh, great and then Nick Evans just brought that up exactly what I was talking about. Uh, so without the lines, I kind of like this actually. It's a little bit cleaner. So there you go there. Um, and then the, the snapback. So the timing is a little bit off on this. I'm going to have to refine this. I'll get better at it. It's all tech for me. and I'm, I'm working on it. But it's really cool once you have enough time to really refine this, you can make the timing, all this stuff work. So there's a next option. And remember, if you want to watch this in real time, if you're on your computer to open up another window or just go head over there real quick, uh, in the description, I put a link to the video where you can watch these in order, uh, how Charlotte runs these. You can see it in your mind's eye with video. Okay, so that was a straight. Now we have something called a handoff. And that basically means it starts with the handoff and then everything else is very similar. So let's watch this without the lines and see how this goes. So one hands off the two, then one will do the, the, the Iverson cut before passing and then the snapback. Now what they, by the way, what they did here, so let me just do this again. So you'll see here a handoff. So one will dribble handoff 
to two, which I like, you know, kind of hide the, the the action for a second because then it gets uh, the defense thinking, oh, this is pistol action. You know, a lot of times in a, if you do a handoff in this area here, the four is going to come and step, you know, set a screen here in the inside ball screen, and then the two is going to try and get in here. That's not what's happening, right? They're, they're kind of, you know, using that on its head. So what they're doing here is uh, dribble, 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 handoff here. And now the one, a lot of times the defense will just sort of ignore the one after he hands off, thinking, oh, he's just going to drift over to the corner, right, to sort of be out of the play. He's done. But no, he's actually the, the, the real part of the play because he is now going to, in theory, this is a little bit of like a snapback itself. So let me just talk about that for one second. The idea of, um, the idea of a snapback to me is sort of like the ball goes to one side, and the guy on, who, was, who was just involved in the play kind of goes to the weak side and then comes right back off of a screen. So I kind of feel like it's a footballish play. Does that make sense? Does it feel like a football play to you guys? Um, I feel like I've seen that in that somewhere. Like, a, is it like a? Uh, oh, I know. It could be like a, um, a an end around or something, right? Where you do the handoff and then the the the, the, um, the what's it called? The wide receiver is coming all the way through the backfield and they hand it off again. So we're moving, moving, moving one way, and then boom, you come right back to the other side. So that's what I like about this whole snapback action, and we actually see it happen uh, in different ways that they use the same concept, but not in the Iverson cut. I'm going to try and get to that at some point. So um, let's see. We have some questions here. I'll quickly go through here. Uh, who would help in the defense when the two penetrates in the zone? Um, okay, good question. Let me see if I can figure that one out with the um, on the uh, on the on the uh, clipboard. Okay, so his question is is okay. So let's just say um, let me just make sure I have that right because. Who doubles defense the two penetrates into the zone? So I, I suppose there's one. There's, there's a couple different options out of this. So let's get to the, a little farther along in this play because when you're talking about who's going to get the two, so let's just. I think I think he might even mean the one here. So if the one gets it here on that wing, and now let's draw on this. Okay. So remember. At this point, if the one is, you know, the one's probably a little closer to the wing over here for spacing. So he now, and he has his whole area wide open, right? So who is going to help? It has to be the fours man, X4, because, you know, or it could be threes man. Actually, it would be threes man because he's lowest. So the lowest guy is always going to be the guy who has to rotate over. So you can imagine what's going to happen if this guy dribbles and pen penetrates. Let me make it a squiggly line so that, um, okay, I didn't want to do that. Um, let's just do this for right now. Whoa. Okay. That was interesting. Let's go back. Okay. I'm trying. Oh, I didn't know. I hit the wrong button. I wanted the eraser. Okay. So let's go back and get rid of the lines. Sorry about that. Uh, I get, I'm a little bit heavy on the old, um, I'm not used to this pencil either. I'm, I'm heavy on the old thing. So let's, oh boy, let's go play this and let's get it back a farther along in the play. Um, why can't I hand it off? Am I? What happened here? Let's do that again. Okay, there we go. So, when we get to this situation here, all right, now, now let's let's do this. So here's here's what's going to happen. This whole area is open for him to drive. That th uh, X three who's guarding him. If the ball is over here, this is good for defense. And I'm and uh, the guy guarding three the, the three the small forward. Okay, he has to be over here anyway, right? Because his man is so far away from the ball. He'd have to be in this area. He'd be his help. And then X four would also then you know slide over and help him over there. So X three would rotate over. X4 would rotate down. Now, if it skipped to the three in the corner, then the four would close out on him. Okay, so that's the rotation. So that's a good question. All right, so let's go back to, are we on the handoff now? Let's go back to the handoff. So here's the handoff. Got it. Now we're going to see, um, I'll just draw on this and see how this works. Now we're going to see four and five setting the screen. Now, here's the question. It's a flat cut across the top, right? So it's not so easy like, to get that screen. They're kind of trying to get in there, but X1 is probably, you know, right behind him trailing. So he's in a position as, let's go a little farther here. Um, as he gets here, 
you know, what you're going to end up seeing is X1 is going to be literally like a locomotive, like right behind him here. So this kind of a screen, you, you can't really screen this guy on this angle, right? A little bit. He can kind of step up a little bit in there, but just trying to keep him. Actually, I guess what you're trying to come to do is keep this X1 right in line, right behind him in this lane so that when he does catch the ball, he's out of position to then stop him from driving. That makes sense. So there he, he gets the ball here. And then here comes the snapback, which we just saw. Uh, let me go back another couple frames and then let's draw this. So here comes the snapback where here's the ball here. The five then after screening there, he then steps up and screens here. Two does a little V cut if he wants. And then boom, you can hit him for a shot. Now four can pop out here, which we see in the video. And if there's no shot by two here, he can skip the ball there and four can do something. He can atta attack and go. He can shoot it. Uh, three can open up into the corner and then maybe they get something here. You get a lot of options there. And the whole key here for this whole set is that this whole area is wide open. There's nobody posting up. There's nobody in the dunker spot. There's no extra defenders in the way. And that's a real powerful kind of set to have to open that up. So does that all make sense so far? Let me go back and um, uh, kind of come back on screen and sort of, you know, talk about you for a second. So it's pretty cool stuff, right? I can remember I was guarding this uh, when I was coaching in high school. Uh, one of the teams in our league started to do this. And I thought it was such a weird cut. The guy had to like turn over his shoulder, catch it, and then find the thing, the, uh, the rim. But it's it, they did it a couple times. The guy ripped through and just went right to the hoop and there was no help, right? Because my guys were like stuck to the, the elbow screeners. And so they were up far enough where there was no way to get in, in help without fouling them by the time they get there. So it's a really powerful thing. And it works in, in high school. You just would need to, you know, really practice with the guy catching that ball in the wing that he can handle uh, looking over his shoulder to catch it and then and facing up without traveling and then being able to attack right away. Uh, balance and, and uh, wise is important to do that. So that's a real, that's a real interesting, great cut to do. Um, okay. So can it work against a two, three zone? Wow. That's a great question. Um, you know, it probably could. Here, here's the thing about the two, three zone, why it would. Okay. I'll show you. That's a great question. So let's go to the, the blank clipboard and uh, we'll, we'll describe that real quick. Um, Okay, so the blank clipboard, we have, uh, if we, it's a 2-3 zone, so we'll just do, you know, let's see what, here and here, and then we'll put these guys, you know, whatever. Okay, so here's the key. If this guy, if this guard is going to be cutting across the lane here to get open, this, the screen you'd want is right here, this screen out here, okay? That's really key because if he does not, if he prevents this guard from, this guard, from getting over and open, then two is just gonna have a shot, right? Now that's not an easy shot to catch it, going away from the basket, turning it over his shoulder, but he can, and then there isn't necessarily a penetration, right? Because this guy is right here, okay? But what you could do is you have the three starting out here, right? And if he stays there, instead of cutting through against the zone, then what, what, what would probably end up happening is when the point guard throws the ball to the wing here, um, and the, and this guard on the top is being screened by the five. The forward's going to have to run up there like a crazy man to guard that. And if that happens, you should be able to get a quick you know pass to the corner, and that the corner guy would have a nice easy open three. So let me do that one more time so it's clear what I'm doing. So basically, here's this you know the, the thing, and the ball's here, right? When the ball's on top, that these guards are going to be in this alignment. They should be. They don't want to let the the guy, they don't want the guy to penetrate in between. So this cut across will be a little bit strange for them, I'd imagine. I mean, I, yeah, because you don't normally in a 2-3 zone see a cutter like just kind of cut right in front of you to that spot, right? So when he throws that ball, okay. Now five can start a little bit wider out here so that the, he, the this guard here is not as uh, aware of what's happening. So that when he turns to run like he would normally do to get to that, that right wing, right, he turns five hits him with that screen and he's, he's taken out. So that means that this forward all of a sudden has to run up there and then boom, the three is wide open. Now the three could then attack on the catch and, 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 you know, blow that up. And then the one would be moving over here and you'd get all sorts of stuff. Cause then everyone, the other two guys have to shift over and all of a sudden this whole backside is wide open. So that's a great question about a zone. So yeah. Uh, have I seen that? No. Why? I don't know. But you know what? If you coach in high school, are there any coaches out there in high school right now? If you're out there in high school and you coach, put this in. Try it. I'm telling you, you're going to get some good stuff, especially in that corner three on a catch and shoot because um, it's, I just, I mean, you know, Nick Basketball, great suggestion. It would really work. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, Seung Kong remembers Iris in running this, and the crazy part was even when the defense rotated well, I, I, AI could hit some crazy mid-range. Uh, right, when you have a guy like that who can, who can score like that and you give him that much room, it really is a great opportunity for him to do a lot of stuff. So, for sure. Um, let's see here. So, let's go... Um, Let's go to the next one because, oh, can the four screen the one is a good question. So let's look at this. Um, if we are here, the only question now is at what point are we talking about? Like in, in this app, uh, uh, oh, I see. Well, the four does screen, well, let me go back to the, uh, sorry. Let me show you this again. If we're talking about the handoff version, the one takes the place of the two, right? In the beginning, right after the handoff. So the four does screen for the one there, okay? Um, coming across in the Iverson cut. Is that not what you mean is the question. Um, and, and and Pelvis, absolutely, uh, you know, I don't see why eighth grade boys could not run this. This is a very rote set. It's very much, there's not a lot of reading going on, right? You just kind of run it through and you do it. So um, USA basketball team has missed 10 years in a row versus national team zones. Uh, they haven't done well against the zone, that's for sure, um, at, at times. But obviously they've won enough, so it hasn't been enough of an issue. Um Let's see here. Okay, so let's well, let's go back. I mean, we can go. I have some other options here I want to show you before we get too long in the tooth. And we got games coming up sooner than later, sort of. But hey, okay. The next one we I want to show you though is the zipper cut. So I think we're all familiar with the zipper cut, right? I'm going to show you what this looks like real quick with the drawing. So the one dribbles to the wing, which is a very common action now, and the four and the two comes off the four. That's setting the screen here, like a pin down screen high. That is called the zipper cut right here zipper I gotta get used to this pen that's a zipper cut and anytime you see a, a guy going from the block to the top like this it's a zipper cut usually with the screen and that screen could be here at the elbow it could be down low at the block a lot of different things you could start the two here and he can go like this and then up if he wants but you know to keep it simple and to keep the con the concept of it it's like that I like to just call any kind of a cut from the block to the top along the lane line is a zipper cut okay now I don't know exactly why they call the zipper cut we should you know I you know I, I can remember uh, having this demonstrated to me when uh, Stu Jackson was the head coach at Wisconsin and I was the manager and they first put this in like I'll never forget it and he and the signal was easy he used the zipper like um, let me show you he would do this um, to, from the sideline, you know, it's, it's too loud. He'd go like this, you know, like a zipper, and everyone, okay, no, and that would that would trigger a whole thing. Which, by the way, is a whole offense in and of itself. The zipper offense is a, is a similar alignment to this, and it has a whole bunch of different options that you can run. Okay, but let's get back to the diagrams because uh, I want to show you the zipper in, entry. So, basically, what we have here out of the entry is after the zipper cut. So watch the two zipper cut, boom. Then one will throw it to two. Okay. Now, at this point, one becomes the Iverson cutter. You, you can see this alignment, right? You'll see one going all the way across. And two will kind of, might even dribble along with him a little bit to change the angle. Um, okay, five went a little early. i got to fix that. So then two throws the ball to one. And then you're going to see two, you know, V cut around there and snap back and then get that pass. Okay? And then for the shot. Oh, go back. Let me just do this again. So let me, let me I'll animate this so the timing is right. All right, so... I, but five came up too early in my uh, animation, forgive me. So one has the ball again. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Three is already out of there. So he has the whole area. He has his whole side to attack. But he can string the ball down this way a little bit to like make it look like he wants to attack on the baseline. And then stop, pivot, or turn. And then the two, this angle is a little bit off. The two is probably a little bit higher here. And the five um, is, is yeah, the two is actually, let's fix this. Ideally, the two isn't that far. The two is um, would be still like around the midline. So when he doesn't have to go that far to V cut and come back around and one can hit him. Now, on that cut, here's another thing that's kind of cool we don't see, but we could as an option, would be is, let me erase this so I can clean this up. So imagine this, okay? Imagine this. Um, the five is setting that screen, okay? Two is coming off of here. Now, the ball is here, and he's looking at this whole play. This is, the, this is the only game in town. Now, the five can be setting that screen, and then he can slip that screen really quickly to the basket. His man is probably really concerned. Pretend that's like Steph Curry, right? And he's worried that if Steph Curry's man gets stuck behind that screen, then he's going to be wide open right here for a beautiful three-pointer. X5 here, let me uh, see if I can clean this up a little bit. X5 
the guy guarding five might probably step up a little bit here to watch for that and help. And if five can cut right to the basket, then boom, it's an easy pass for a layup right there. Okay. Or heck, he gets it there. If three is here, his man has to get over there really quickly, and then five can toss it to three for a wide open three. No way you'd stop that. You know, and that's all you need. You can run that in eighth grade. You can run that in ninth grade. It doesn't matter. You can do it at almost every level uh, right there would be a great opportunity there. So um, that's a great uh, option right there. And that's how they run it. So they can disguise these things, uh, initiating in different ways. So what do we have so far? We've got, um, we have just a straight dribble the ball up, let the guy do the Iverson cut and throw the ball to him. You can hand off on the wing and then all of a sudden, you've now switched it. So the point guard it was the two, and the two is the point guard. And you know, in that case, if you wanted Allen Iverson to be the the cutter on that one, he would bring the ball up. Okay, again, this is the key thing to disguising who is running that Iverson cut. So the more you can disguise it, the easier it is. Uh, again, or you do the zipper cut where you, the ball handler brings the ball over, throws it to the top, and then he does a zipper cut as well. So again. You would think that a lot of times if the point guard brings the ball to the wing and makes a pass, he's going to be a lot less um, the focus of the offense. When it turned, in, in, in reality, he is the offense. He is the zipper, the Iverson cutter. So really powerful stuff. I think I've got one more to show you. Oh, yeah. So then I got a cool pick and roll out of this. If you go watch the clip, it's the fourth clip or the fifth clip in that what I, uh, what I attached in that um, – uh, or I did the uh, link down in the description. You should check it out because this is a very European looking thing and it's really kind of neat. Uh, I kind of actually want to call it up in front of me too so I can see it um, really quickly just because it's a little bit complicated, but it starts the same way with an Iverson cut. So let me get over here and show you that. So we have the same idea here. They flip the script and have the Iverson guy going from the right to the left. Again, this is a very symmetrical offense. You can have him cut depending on... By the way, if you this could be... Um, the reason why we showed it, I think, the most of the way going to the right side is because the righty is catching the ball. But, you know, if your guy here is a lefty and you th and he's cutting this way to make that catch, now he's going to use his strong hand to go to the basket that way. That's, you know, that's good coaching. That's a good way to get him in a strong hand. Obviously, they both should have equally good hands, but um, uh, it's not a bad idea, you know, even at the NBA level to have your strong hand be able to attack. So that's what's happening there. Um, so... What did I want to do? So let's show you this play because it's really kind of cool. All right. So first off, we have the Iverson cut across the top and the one brings it that way. Now, you, I want you to watch this. Let me go back a little bit farther and I'll, I'll animate this. So I'll, I'm going to draw on this first. I think it's easier if I draw it a little bit first and then we'll animate it. What happens here is the two finishes the Iver cut, Iverson cut doesn't get the ball. Okay. This is cool. Now, at that point, the four is going to screen for the five. Okay, now X4 might for a second look at that cutter on the five, keep his eyes out on this for a little and get him behind because then what happens is four is going to step up here and set a, uh, a uh, ball screen for the one who comes around here and then roll. Okay, now three, uh, we'll get into that in a second. But um, that's a really cool little uh, a wrinkle out of this where everyone thinks it's going to go here to the two. And in fact, we, we actually are doing a similar kind of uh, snapback action, but with a pick and roll. Everything moving uh, to the left side, and then boom, snap right back on a pick and roll. So let's watch this with the um, this the numbers here uh, animated. Are you ready? Let's do that again. So here we go. There's the Iverson that doesn't pass it to him. Five breaks off the four. Now watch that. That's what's cool. What's happening there on the on the on the underneath the basket. So three hasn't moved yet. He delays his cut for a little bit because after five breaks off of that um, that that screen for four. Four is setting the screen and five is coming around. Right now, you never know. He might be able to throw it there for a little, you know, a little jump shot or something, or or his own Iverson cut, by the way. That's basically an Iverson cut, right? Coming off the four and then opening up to that wing. That could easily be like another Iverson version. Boom, and the whole the whole floor is open to him. So, but he doesn't get the ball here. He actually goes and he's going to set a pin down. And three comes all the way over, over, and then boom, breaks off of there to the corner. Now, when this guy, that's exactly when he's coming off that screen. So now one is on his way downhill. Uh, let me go a little farther uh, along here. So here's what's happening here. So that when the timing is right, you know, this is a little bit late on this one. The three, here's the pick and roll, right? And the, this guy's going to roll, and he's got the uh, one's got the ball. Five was all should already be here. Now, here's what's interesting about this one: the way they did it was three is going to come off. I think what they're looking for is is drive it and kick it because 
Five's man is going to be right around here anyway on that pin down, right? There's not going to be a huge window for him, for the one to get in there because there's help here. And it's it's kind of uh, crowded right there. But what should be open is the three coming off of this or the four rolling here. Someone's going to have to help off. And if it's X2 helping off, then it's X2, you know, two can slide to the corner. So does that all make sense so far? Let me see here. Uh, let's go to the... Uh, to the um, comments and see what we got here because that's a little complicated but a kind of a cool little way for everyone to kind of disperse out to the perimeter and they get a pick and roll very common right uh, pick and rolls what everybody wants to run but what the Spurs taught us in 2014 was the best way to run a pick and roll is to have action before that leading into it get the defense out of position spread out and then boom hit them with the pick and roll not just like dribble the ball down and spread and do uh, which we still see and which I still say think is uh, is as not nearly as effective as um, you know running a play like this or pistol or anything like that so uh, let's go to the comments real quick and see how we're doing and uh, make sure I've caught up and make sure everyone's on the same page um, yes uh, well here's a question from our last video Christian Engberg asks about the following when you're down by three so I, I had this I found this uh, really cool website uh, that goes through all the play-by-play -play information and I was doing the filters and I a couple things sort of slipped through the cracks a couple of uh, examples of uh, guys actually getting the rebound and scoring to tie it uh, now I'm forgetting which one it was but someone sent it to me and I was like yeah um, so it does happen a little bit but I really uh, could barely find any examples but uh, the Stephen Adams Westbrook one. I think that might be the one you're talking about too. Um, now there might have been almost like no time left on the clock on that one. It was crazy. Like you wouldn't have thought that was possible to have happened. But I gotta that that again. That just kind of proves the point that it really almost never happens. But there was that one. I think there was actually one other one too. And now I'm totally blanking because my mind is mush. But um, which team in the league is the best at out of timeout plays? Well, if you want to know this year, I mean, you know, Synergy has that information. I, you know, I guess I could quickly look it up if you want to wait for one second. Because, um, you know, it's always a good, you know, uh, determiner of, you know, coaching in, a, in some ways, right? Um, because that's, those are the plays where the coaches have the most influence. So, you know, but like, for instance, you would think that, you know, Brad Stevens would be, you know, his team should be number one. This year, they're 16th. You know, they're like a little bit below average on after time out plays. It's kind of crazy. Um, but the best team this year has been Houston, you know, and the next team is Net, the Nets. Now, I would imagine that Brooklyn might have some clever sets, but it might just be that the, it ends up being Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, or James Harden shooting it, you know, a tough shot, and they make it. Um, I had seen that a little bit in the Warriors, where they always usually have really creative plays, but then uh, a lot of the time they'll end up, you know, when they had KD or uh, KD there, it would just be like a tough shot that only th those guys could hit. Uh, it really helps the, uh, the the points per possession. So there's your answer on that one. Um, Let's see. So yeah, it was a rare. I don't know why I omitted it. I didn't. It didn't come up. I was looking for all as many as I could find. Although it had to be within the last three years because they didn't have video attached to the plays before that. So does anybody remember when that was? That was if that was 2016. That might have been the reason why it didn't pop up. Um, Ahmad asks, could the Iverson cut be uh, used to set a hammer play? Four and five set screens for two on the cut, and then at the same time, three cuts along the baseline. Well, let's look at that for a second, because I love, this is great experimentation. Uh, let me go back to the, to the clipboard. Let's go to a blank clipboard, actually. Um, okay, so let me just read this again so we can get this uh, organized. So um, four and five set screens for two on the cut. Okay, so we have four and five and two. Okay, now four and five set screens and two on the cut. At the same time, three cuts along the baseline, right? Which is what we have. Now, um, three and four set screens for one on the left wing. Okay, so three and four. Oh, yes. God damn, is that good, man? That is really good. The timing is a little bit interesting because it doesn't necessarily work perfectly, and I'll tell you why. So one is going to throw the ball to here. Two is going to want to catch and kind of go to the baseline. Now, I don't know if one is going to be able to get all the way to the corner quickly enough for one to not have to wait at all before going. Now, one could wait a second, uh, just kind of look and fake or whatever, and then go. That might be the key here. But what he's proposing, which is brilliant, is um, – let's erase this so we can see this better – is um, – okay, let me get rid of the three there. So here's what we have. We've got the three here in the corner – 
or three is coming around, four is here, one is just passed. So what four could do is step up and screen over here, and one can come off of that. Three can also be stepping up here and setting a screen. One is continually to go full speed sprint, beautiful right there. And then um, one, uh, you know, a hammer cut, if we don't know what the hammer play is, hammer play is hammer time, is the one has, uh, sorry, the two has the ball here, and he is going to drive, drive, drive. And basically, you can almost jump out of bounds if you want to. You can jump in the air out of bounds, and then you fire the pass to the to the guy who is sprinting that way to the corner for an open three. And the reason why it usually works is because um, they're not paying attention. Uh, one's man is looking at the ball, or he's trying to see man and ball, and it ends up being, you can imagine, X1, it's a total back screen. Now, you'd imagine... X4 would then have to switch, and then uh, the three would have to screen X4's man. That would probably really screw everything up. X3 uh, on, for the defense. X3 would then have to somehow run out there, but that means that three can jump in here, and that means one can hit three for a layup too because this whole area is, is now open. That's actually a perfect, great, a great example, Ahmad. I love that. Any chance you can find hammer uh, is always a, is great with me. Uh, so the question there is, okay, again, timing is an issue because if two is going to go right away, uh, they'd be like waiting. I don't think one could get there. It would be t it would be close, but maybe. Um, and uh, but that but still that could work. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else off of that. That's interesting to me. But that's a really great point. Uh, so love it. Love that idea. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Throw them out there. I'm um, going through the. Let's go through more of these uh, comments. Uh, with shooting bigs in today's league, would it make sense to have either four screen for five or the other? I imagine the Mavs doing that with KP as a five. Um, yeah, exactly. That's the other thing is you can flip and switch. You can put a guard in the four or the five spot. It doesn't really matter at all. Uh, this looks like horns a little bit, right? We all know what horns is, right? So, uh, you know, horns is really a, a similar thing. I'll show you that real quick. So horns is always, you know, looks like this. And I'm not sure why they call it horns. Maybe because it's like horns, you know, these look like horns. I don't know. Right. But, um, I wish we could undo that. Okay. But horns. So you might notice that you know when you have this alignment here, okay, it's not that much of a stretch to then say, oh, okay, well maybe two can kind of come up and then do the Iverson cut, right? And then three goes that way. It's not that much different, right? So all of a sudden you got a lot of different things here. I mean, you can do elevator out of this. You can do elevator into Iverson, right? I mean, look at that. Elevator is when you have for the basic version of it is you know the ball is here and like three cuts under the basket and then he cuts through here and then these two guys pinch the close the elevator doors right these are like elevator doors closing and they try and catch the the x3 behind the play and he gets stuck behind there and then boom three okay so you can run that by the way and then after one throws the ball to the top he can go like iverson right and then four and five would just turn you know that direction and set that screen you know what I mean? Uh, I'm actually getting really excited about this. I hadn't thought about that, and um, I really feel like that's another viable one that we need to get uh, some of these uh, NBA coaches on board with because uh, that's really cool stuff. And again, the more motion you can do out of this um, into even this could be a pick and roll, the better, right? So you're always looking to try and find interesting actions and clever things. I think it's also fun, right? I just think it's like, hey, this is a cool thing. No one's seen this before. They're not, they're not going to be ready for it. Um, the attack you have drawn against 2-3 zone was used by Alito Garcia Renesis, his Spanish coach. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Good to know. Um, uh, good minds think alike. Oh, my goodness. Friend, best friend of the breakdown, Varun Reesboot, is, is back with us. Thank you so much for a super chat. Um, you know, have you seen any new plays that take advantage of a three-point shooting big? Uh, well, now you're going to pimp me because I, I have to, now I have to see if I can come up with an answer for that one right out of the top of my head. Are there any new plays that take advantage of a three-point shooting big? Jeez, I can't really think of anything that's new. Although, you know, now that I'm thinking about bigs, I've been thinking about like post-ups or like traditional big stuff and what you can then do to, uh, you know, lull the defense to sleep and then all of a sudden he gets a, he gets a three would be some version of like posting up and then releasing to the three-point line for the shot, right? He's like all, you know, backing him down. It's all, you know, physical. Everyone's pushing. And all of a sudden, he just releases. And next thing you know, like, the, the big man's like, wait, what? And then he's, you know, shooting a three. So that would be something kind of cool to do uh, out of that. And that's kind of simple, but, you know. Um, you know, or I'm even trying to think of, like, we've seen um, – hmm. We've seen the ball go to the low post and then, like, that guy dribble up into a handoff. So let me, I'll draw that because while we're here using Lucio's 
awesome uh, stuff. Awesome uh, technology. The five had the ball here. We've seen the Warriors do this, and the, and the Celtics and some other teams, I believe, will do this well, where the, he'll get the ball and he'll actually dribble up away from the basket, and like you know, the two will come around for a handoff, right? So what, what he can then do is after he hands it off here, he can then pop out for the three. And then two can like string it out for a dribble and then boom, hit, throw it back to him, which is very similar to a pick and pop anyway, you know, but it's, it's different because it's out of the post and it's a handoff. It's all a little bit quicker. So I, that would be interesting too. Um, you know, at any moment when you're running these, these traditional like high post things, you can always pop out to the three point line in that, if that's the kind of player you are. And then, the, you know, of course you have to rely on the, um, you know, the, whatchamacallit, the, the, the point guard, whoever has the ball to see that, which is not always so easy. But, um, okay, so if anybody else, hopefully I don't see any notifications of uh, any other Super Chats, so forgive me if I missed it, but nonetheless, I don't think so. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep talking. What do you say? We still got time. I mean, the game's starting in about 30 minutes, but hey, uh, you know, we've only been going for 46. So I got time. Um, what about Floppy, Huncho asks? Um Right, and Nick is talking about pick and pop like I was. What about the floppy? So um, if we don't know what floppy is, I'll tell you. Uh, that's, a, that's another really, really basic old school play, which every offense has is, you know, the basic version is single double. So you'd have like five setting a screen here and, you know, I don't know, three and four. And then you put the two here and the one with the ball up on top. And two can choose he wants to go that way or he wants to go that way. That's a floppy set. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess it's floppy because you can go to either side and that that's sort of floppy. It, you know, some random dude at some point got to make up these names and everyone decided to go with it. I don't know if it's fair even because it's like probably a better name than, than floppy for this, but whatever. Single double, obviously, because there's a single screen here and a double screen here. Um, and it sounds cool, I guess. So that's a floppy. So the question then is, could you could you do this out of the floppy, I suppose? Is that the uh, – or are you just asking about floppy? I don't know. Um because this kind of alignment wouldn't necessarily get you towards um, the um, what you call it to like to an Iverson cut really that easily in my mind. I can't picture that. But anyway, um, now I, you know what I do have one more play I wanted to show you because it wasn't this. Uh, did I, let me see if I animated it. I don't think I got there. I did not yet. But um, it was um, a similar snapback action, which I thought was kind of cool which was off of a pick and roll. So it's basically, I'll show you, I'm just gonna draw it for you because um, I didn't have a chance to do the animation of it. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, so, okay, remember what the snapback idea is. Okay, the snapback is Iverson cut, the ball gets passed that way. So now the ball is going in this direction, right? Now one comes this way away from it and then snaps back looking for the pass. So what the war, uh, the Hornets also do, which I thought was kind of cool, was they'll have a, the point guard here with the ball, and he'll dribble off of a screen. We'll just say the five sets the, the, the a ball screen here. And then the five keeps going and then sets another screen for, like, the two who's over here. Boom. So now the one will dribble over and then pass it back to the two. You might notice it's almost the same kind of action, right? It's not – it's a pick and roll here instead of an Iverson cut, but it's similar – uh, to that same concept. And so that's what I love about that, where if you're going to teach this, um, players could be like, oh, I already know this feeling of like, okay, being on the weak side, then taking that screen off the five, looking for the shot or whatever. And I also know the feeling of sort of catching the ball, maybe dribbling to the baseline and turning and then firing it back toward the wing or to the top. So you have the concepts already built in, and now you can expand that and do different actions. And you don't need to actually like – you can almost like economize your practice this way because you can get, you know, two for one. You can practice that same action, um, you know, for two different sets without having to run each set every single time and set it up and waste time. You know what I mean? You're kind of getting, you know, uh, it all into one. Um, and then out of that, you never know. You might get some organic offense where, you know, a guy might just find himself dribbling ball down the wing. And then all of a sudden, you know, the other two guys realize, oh, I can screen for him and he can, you know, come back. All of a sudden, that's the fun stuff when it gets organic because you've worked on it as a part method, you know, just in that little piece of it. Um, and then they, they make the shots because they're so used to, you know, executing that. So then, and, and uh, the biggest part of that is it's hard to guard all of a sudden. It's not a called play. They weren't even, you know, thinking they were going to do it before it started. That's when it, you get that mind meld going and all five fingers on a hand operating together. That's basketball. That's exciting team basketball that you'd see from the best teams.
So, um, so anyway, so Barun, I don't know if I gave you a great answer, but I hope I did. Um, what do I think of the Jazz? Are they legit contenders or just pretenders, James Todd? Uh, they have to continue to convince me. I watch them with a crooked, uh, a crooked um, eyebrow. You know, I'm still not convinced. Um, I, you know, Rudy is still a thing for me. I just watch him and see, he's, you know, the hands are better, but they're not great. And, you know, I, there's still issues defensively with him. I know he's one defensive player of the year award, but I don't know. I, I, I see too many, uh, too many guys score on him sometimes, and it's, it's frustrating to me if he's supposed to be that good. Um, but they, they're good. They're solid. They've been playing together for so long that a weird season like this won't affect them nearly as much as maybe other teams that have had a lot of major overhauls that could be better. Um, so it could be one of those things where they're just taking advantage right now because they've been together for so long now and know each other and they're the same coach and everything's the same. Um, so they need to convince me a little bit more. But they're good. They're good. They're top. They're they're, they're top. You know, four in the in the Western Conference. You know. Um, but the real question is, is what can they do in the playoffs? And that's what's what we have to find out. So I'm going to keep my eye on them. I'm going to do a deeper dive and, and really see if I can't come up with a better answer. But that's my thoughts. Um, please make a Luka Doncic defensive. You know, I've been hearing about his defense. I watched a couple games. I forgot to kind of really focus on it. But um, I have heard about it. I've seen a little evidence of it. And so, yeah, I think there's definitely worthy of a video for Luka about, you know, um, you know his uh, his defensive prowess. Interestingly enough, you know here's a little tidbit. Maybe people don't know. You know the, the Mavericks' offense went from you know number one all time greatest last year to they were like twentieth or something. Uh, let me look it up real quick again. They were they were you know their offense is not good um, all of a sudden, and um, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint why. And uh, I was looking at that. And I mean, I think one of the reasons why is they're you know the three three of their most uh, prolific. Um, Three-point shooters are all shooting like 30% or less. It was really not good. Uh, let's see, Dallas is 16th. They're like That's a little bit below average. That's not good, um, especially considering what they were doing last year. Now, the Bucks of all teams are number one, and they're even doing better than last year's all-time high, uh, with Giannis having, you know, not a, a spectacular year for his standards. So that's another video I need to, you know, figure out. If anybody has any insight into that, uh, let me know. I, I watched a little bit of Bucks, but I need to do a deep dive soon. Um, let's see, is there a way to make continuity with this? So that's an interesting question. You know, because of the Iverson cut itself, um, I don't know how, if you get continuity with it, it seems like it's a, it's focused on, you get it there and then you have, it, it breaks out from there. It doesn't like repeat. So continuity would be like, you run an Iverson, you know, a cut to one side, you don't get anything. Okay. You run it to the other side. I think it's a little extreme on that one. I don't know if that would be my first uh, impression. I, this would be much more of a, you don't get it, you flow into your base motion offense, which is a lot less um, unique, I suppose is the word. So, yeah. Now, flex action, would flex action work? Well, um, uh, gosh, you, uh, give me some, uh, give me an idea, Nick, about what how you, what the, uh, the, um, the, the alignment would be because flex is you know you screen the screener on the weak side kind of stuff which is basic stuff but you, you know you still run it in the NBA because it works. Um, Minnesota has drawn up a bunch of creative stuff to get cats and looks on movement threes. Uh, okay, it's good to know. I, I want to make I would love to know that uh, Saunders is a good coach. Um, so I'll, I'll have to check that out. Do you think that guards should screen more for bigs to get open threes? Um, yeah, I, I love when you flip the the, uh, the roles and you have guards screening and big men popping out. So, yeah, I, would, I mean, if it works and they have sh bigs who can shoot, yeah. Uh, oftentimes, though, it's the guard who gets open because the big is being screened. They all think it's going to him, and then, boom, he can pop out too. So a lot of interesting things there. Or you can even do a screen for the big who pops out, gets the, bo the ball, who can then maybe dribble a handoff back to the guard and then do a little two-man game or something. That's interesting too. Um Let's see here. Uh, okay. I, uh, would the Iverson cut work for the last shot in a game with 10 seconds left? Aha. Right. It does take a while, and it's very specific. If it gets denied, you know, you're kind of in trouble there a little bit. You probably just quickly pick and roll. I don't think I've seen an Iverson cut for the last, last shot of a game. And there's probably a reason for that. I think it's a little slow developing for that. Um, and there's a little bit of, um, you know, here's the thing about the Iverson cut. It could be a pick six pretty easily if you don't throw it right, 
right? You're going to the to the wing over your shoulder to catch it, right? The, 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 the defender is right behind you, maybe not screened off because he's like a locomotive, you know, right behind him. You know, stepping in and stealing that is pretty, is not that hard necessarily. If he doesn't get it, it's all over, right? That's why it's not necessarily worth worth the risk. But if he gets it, it's a pick six because, you know, maybe one-on-one -on, -one on the way back, maybe the, the point guard through it can get back. But um, it's that stuff. So, um can I hear? Can I? Can you hear me shaking my head about the Nets defense? Yeah, it's not good at all. Um, but uh, yeah, they just got to continue playing together and practicing, and hopefully they have a good defensive coach. Uh, what are the Bulls missing? I mean, they're they're playing better. You know, they're better. It's just, don't be. Let's not look at it as what they're missing, and let's look at it as being encouraged that they're like they're playing better, and there's things to cheer about. I think, and you know, I think Donovan's going to slowly put this thing together. Um, they could use a couple more upgrades just across the board in the roster for NBA talent. Um, any videos on the rookies in the making? I, yeah, I think I got to do one, right? Um, maybe like Halliburton or um, Quickly, one of those two or both or something like that. So stay tuned. I got it in the list. I'm going to take care of it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the Sixers definitely deserve a video. Uh, they're, they're actually selling me more on their viability as a, as a deep playoff team. Like I'm wait, waiting for the Jazz to do that. I think the Sixers are inching closer to getting me to believe that maybe they could do it. I, you know, there's something about it that's a little bit different this year that seems better. Um, let's see here. Dallas had, um, where did you see that? I just lost my place here. Dallas had five guys in COVID. That's why. Okay. That's another reason too, for sure. For sure. So when they get everybody healthy and back together, then, then we'll look at it. But, um, we'll see. It, it was interesting. They, you know, Luca Richardson and, um, KP are all shooting really bad. They're all taking six a game. Um, who was going to win MVP? Like, you know, Le LeBron, Giannis, it's the same Luca, you know, it's one of those three. Uh, Middleton has been very good this year. He's always very good this year, you know, every year. Um, let's see. Yeah, so FC 4642 had an interesting uh, take on the Iverson cut and crunch time. If you have a dude that can make tough shots consistently, since the screens and the elbows can get the guards caught sometimes. Yeah, again, I'm not like I mentioned, they can. But then again, you know, if you throw if you throw a steal in that situation, man, I don't think it's I don't know if it's worth it. Um, oh my goodness, Varun is back. Uh, thank you again so much for being such a you know a, a friend of the breakdown. Sixers versus Lakers game, but the end. MB did not post up when the game was very close. What do you make of that? Oh, I guess you weren't on Twitter. Okay, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you're missing a whole other realm of the craziness uh, because Laker fans went off on me for this. So um, they didn't go to Embiid, who had been playing well up until the last five minutes. Yeah, and in the last five minutes, he was like one for five with a turnover, and AD had a couple of really great defensive possessions. So I could easily see why Doc said, uh, we're not going to do that, uh, go there that this time. So they're like, okay, let's get let's attack the weakest link or the weaker link in the defense. Well, Caruso happened to be out there. Um, they did a uh, handoff, I think, with uh, LeBron's man. So LeBron switches off. He shouldn't have. He didn't have to uh, off of Tobias Harris. So it left... Um, it left uh, Caruso to guard Tobias Harris. Now, Caruso is a good defender, but he's also shorter than Tobias, who just kind of, you know, stepped back and rose over him and, and not hit the game-winning shot. Uh, great play call. I'm sure Doc was, you know, giving him a tap on the, himself on the shoulder for that. Um, for all those reasons, it worked out exactly the way he wanted it to. So uh, that's what I make about it is that Embiid just, you know, had, they had had plenty of chances in the last five minutes and was not playing well then. Uh, and Doc had to, you know, go with what was working. So uh, that's what that means. Uh, and they won. So, you know, it's not, you don't have to work, look into it, the Sixers fans. The Lakers fans, you know, just got so pissy with me about, you know, Caruso. Like, they're very protective of Caruso. By the way, I'm the guy that, like, probably told them he was good in the beginning. But nonetheless, uh, they were really, really uh, coming all over the place. It was nuts for like an hour. Uh, who am I voting for the All-Star game? I don't know. I'm terrible with that stuff. I'm always going to leave somebody out and forget, you know, um, so, yeah. By the way, the Nets do miss Jared Allen and Torian Prince, for sure. They were playing defense uh, this year. Uh, I don't know if I want to do a video on the Rockets. I mean, maybe. I'll, I don't know. I, I, some of the games I've watched recently have been so bad. It's just so bad. I'm sorry. Uh, the, you know, the turnovers I saw John Wall make. In fact, there was a Rockets-Wizards game. There were plays that did not deserve to be in the NBA. Okay, not players necessarily, but the players were making plays that should, you should not see in the NBA. They were that poor. Um, what would you say to an undersized guard who needs to score for his team but has been a pass-first guard his whole life? That's always tough. The, the pass-first guys, are, you know, there's a mentality there that's not easy to switch. 
Um, you know, and you kind of feel like, well, should I have all this spotlight on me? And should I be, you know, forcing shots like this? It feels weird to me. That's how I, I was a pass first guy, even though I could shoot the hell out of the ball. Um, I, I always felt like here's the thing that was driving me nuts. I was watching, um, you know, was it was it uh, Harden or somebody or maybe it was Steph doing all the crazy ISO stuff like he actually was Steph did a thing where a guy almost fell down and he hit a step back, whatever. I used to screw around with that all the time in high school, and I was really good at it, but I never dared do it. Not even like in pickup, I wouldn't do it. I would screw around like one on one or even by myself, and I really could do it. And I'd be like, and I was kind of quick back then, um, and I, but I never had the guts to ever even try that in the game. Uh, and here these guys are doing it. So, um, but it was a mentality thing. It's like, gosh, I, I can't do that because I'm not supposed to do that, right? So, you know, that's the beginning is you need to be able to get in that mindset where it's like, F you, I'm going to score on you and I'm going to embarrass you while, you're, while I'm doing it. Um, and you can, if you can kind of convince yourself like a method actor can, then, uh, then you can kind of get in that right space and then you can kind of from there become that score you're looking for. Um, but, you know, then it requires ultimate skill. And if you're undersized, then you got to be able to shoot the three off the dribble. That's it. You got to be able to knock that shot down off the dribble. Uh, a lot of uh, shooting guards and small forwards started using the Iverson in the early 2000s, moving without the ball. Cut. Yes, that's for sure. Um, Chris Middleton is the modern day Rip Hamilton. That's interesting. Middleton handles the ball a little bit more, runs more pick and roll, but there's something there. I can kind of see it. And he's bigger, he's longer. Um, KD, KD may win the MVP over Braun. The, the problem with KD is he's got Harden and Kyrie, and they're gonna kind of they're gonna suck some energy from each other. So I don't know if any of those guys would ever be able to get in the MVP conversation because they're all in the same team now. So I, I wouldn't anticipate KD winning, believe it or not. Um, Harris has been shooting amazingly. Uh, who else is looking at? Um, oh God, someone's shooting over fifty percent too. Oh, Seth Curry is shooting over fifty percent too, and, and shooting really well. Um, so, we, I, you know, there's going to be guys. Remember, I told you, people were like trying to make fun of me on Twitter for saying, you know, there's someone's going to break 50% on high volume in three-point land sooner than later. And this this might be the year. Um, do I think Simmons can be Defensive Player of the Year? Yeah. I mean, I, you watch Simmons guard LeBron. Now, that's all you got to see. LeBron a lot of times gets a little bit passive when Simmons picks him up because he's the same size and he's quick and he's strong. Um Lakers paint defense. I don't know. I don't know if I have a thought about that. You know, I don't know. I, I'd see. I watched the Lakers the other day. Um, they don't look great now, but they also look like they're just kind of cruising, you know, championship, champion hangover. I'm not too worried about them. But, you know, they don't have Dwight. They don't have um, uh, JaVale. And that's something. What do you think the Wizards could get for Bradley Beal if they were to trade him? Great question. They, they have to get a really solid, really solid, like maybe all-star or like a little bit below all-star guard or player and then you know at least uh, one or two really good first round picks uh that would probably be the base and there's probably some other stuff thrown in there but i would i would imagine it's like a couple of really good picks and a, and a really good player uh back for him would be in the what you'd start with um let's see oh yeah you want to see my highlights uh i don't know if i have anything on video anymore and you know this is in the, in the late 80s early 90s no one filmed anything um Let's see. What do you think the Wizards... Okay, where are we here? Seems like Tobias is doing much better playing the four this year rather than a spot-up three like last year. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's an, he's got an advantage. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see that. And that's... The fours are going to be threes and the threes are going to be twos. You know, everything's moving smaller and, and like playing smaller. Lakers and Celtics tomorrow. Who you got and why? Ooh. Where is the game? I'll take the home team because they're home. I don't know. You know, it's a weird season, man. It's weird to make any predictions this season because of COVID and the schedule, the way it is. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can't figure this season out at all. Um, what team is on deck for a vid? Okay, so good question. I mean, I think that the, maybe the Bucks are on deck. I was talking with my guy today about what we want to do. Um, Keldon Johnson I kind of want to do, but I just don't know if anybody wants to see a video on Keldon Johnson. Um, but I might be able to figure out a way to title it so people would want to watch more of it. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, how many of you guys are in my YouTube membership? If you were, uh, if you were a point guard, a point god, or a big man, you were you, uh, you could have joined my um, my live show uh, I did the other night uh, for only people in the membership, and it was great. We had a bunch of people, and we had a great conversation, a little bit like this. Uh, so join the membership. There's three tiers, and not expensive at all. Uh, you get some custom emojis, and then you get like uh, live watch parties exclusively for the membership that I've been doing. Uh, and then live live shows, exclusive shows, and then I'll do some more other content like interview stuff with people. So you know, head over there, check it out. The buttons below, I believe, uh, even on a live show, and uh, and and you know, consider it. 
Um, undervalued players. Oh, it's one of those things like who are the most this or that? Uh, let's see, undervalued. I don't know. I'll throw that question out to the to the uh, chat. Maybe we can come up with some consensus here. Who are the most undervalued players uh, in the league right now? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I usually can go, if I look at the teams real quick, I can kind of come up with somebody. Um, I mean, what, what would be the undervalued? A guy who can like, who's really just can shoot threes really well. Um, you know, like Kelly Oubre, by the way, is getting too much crap. His shooting is obviously takes front and center, but he does so many things defensively that are so good, deflections and disruptions, uh, that he just makes it, in my mind, worth it. But um, if he gets to back to 30, 31, 33 percent even from three, then, you know, he's really helping. Um, it's when he goes one for 11, that's the problem. That doesn't help. But uh, those that's the kind of players I always think of the low are the, are the undervalued guys. Um, gosh, who else would that be? Um, like I think like Royce O'Neal I've always liked. I think in a different situation he could probably, you know, score more. Um, let's see here. Who is another undervalued person? You know, you know, Seth Curry, you could argue, is one of the reasons why the Sixers are doing so well. Um, you know, his spacing and he can really shoot it, but I don't know if that's I don't know if he's undervalued or not. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? As we let's let's well, we start to wrap this up, I'll I'll answer the last couple questions here. Um, and hopefully the Iverson cut series I showed you, you know, made sense and you got a chance to check out the, uh, you know, the Lucio sports and how that works because that's what a lot of the NBA teams are using now. Um, in fantasy, should I play Royce O'Neal or Luke Kennard? You know, Kennard's numbers are not nearly what I thought they were going to be. Let me go check that real quick again. Cause I looked at it the other day. I thought, and I was like, Whoa, uh, well, unless I was looking at it wrong, Luke Kennard right now is, um, averaging 8.7 points. He's shooting 42% from three and 46.7% overall. Um, I just thought he'd be easily like, you know, 12, 14 points a game and making a bunch of threes and getting assists, you know. Um, so, he, you know, he's getting a couple assists a game and he's only, he's only playing 23 minutes. He's not playing a ton of minutes. So um, so that's a little bit of a disappointment, I would think. I thought he was going to do better. So who was the question between Luke Kennard and uh, Royce O'Neal? You know, I think Roy, uh, Luke Kennard pr- still gets more opportunities uh, in their offense, although watch Royce O'Neal is averaging more points. Let's just see real quick. Uh, Royce O'Neal this year is you know almost the same. It's a tough question. I would probably go with Luke Kennard. I just feel like he's got more the, the way the Clippers are running their offense. He still gets more opportunities on the ball to do some things. So you know why not? Um, Larry Nance Jr. Yeah, absolutely. Larry Nance is another one of those guys. Uh, not a lot of the box score stuff, but like just does so many good things out there. And uh, is he he started to shoot threes. Let me just look, check that out real quick because I'm kind of curious if he's hitting them. Um, he is. He's taking over almost you know three point six a game. Oh my goodness! And Larry Nance is shooting forty two percent. Oh, th- he needs a video. He needs a video. I didn't realize he was shooting that high. Uh, which is crazy because he's only shooting 57% from from, from for the free throw line. It's weird. I mean, his, his mechanics are weird. I would anticipate that not staying that high uh, from the three-point line. But, um, you know, he's, what, he's, he's scoring 10 and a half game, uh, points a minute, uh, 10 and a half points a game, um, six, 6.3 rebounds, three and a half assists. He's doing some nice things, 2.3 steals. Uh, Larry Nance is, is doing a lot of great things. He's mo- definitely uh, obscure and underrated. Um, Shake Milton, yeah, okay, I can see that. Uh, is Portis playing okay? I, I, I haven't gotten a chance to watch too much. I've seen him do a little bit when, I, when he's been out there. Uh, Tobias Harris, I'm not sure he's underrated. I feel like he's rated about, you know, where he should be. Um, so the Emmanuel Quickly video, you know, maybe I'll do one with be comparing him to, um, to Halliburton or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, thoughts on Coach Silas reinvigorating the, the Rockets or the defensive approach that is leading to transition opportunities? Uh, I, yeah, I, Chris Wood for sure could be at most improved, I think, although he – he had a pretty good year last year, so I don't know if we I don't know if he wins that because of that. Let me just see here what um, I got to type in Christian, huh? Christian Wood, there he is. Let's see. Last year he's thirteen. No, that's still a pretty big jump from thirteen to twenty three point four. Although, oh yeah. So uh, yeah, I would think that Chris Wood would be in the in the, in the top two or three voting for MIP. Um, the Mavericks, you know, they had a uh, problem with COVID, and uh, and then Luca, KP, and uh, Richardson are all shooting even below, way below their standards. So if that regresses to the mean, they'll be better. They'll win more games. Um, Sexton could very well be getting into underrated, you know, territory too. He's been pretty damn good. Um, what do I think the Grizzlies' ceiling is for the year when they get JJJ back? Uh, absolutely, uh, I, the playoffs. The Grizzlies should be. I mean, if they get him back in time, uh, Jared. Uh, Jerry Jackson Jr. If they get him back in time, and uh, I believe uh, he's uh, uh, 
what's it called? Ja is back. Uh, so if they get those two guys back, they should be competing for the playoffs uh, by the end of the year. They should. Uh, Jeremy Grant, another one of those. Absolutely. Very good. Good call. Good call. Um, all right, guys. Well, listen, that's, you know, 70 minutes in. Great show. I hope you like the X's and O's. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for another Friday Night Lights. We might even have a special guest. We might. I don't know, but, you know, let me just say it might be somebody who also does what I do in that same vein in the, like the Friday Night Lights video. So you can, you, I'll leave you to guess who that might be. There's only one other person, I think, in the world that does that. Um, well, maybe two. So you, you, you left your own advice. We'll see if I can't, uh, see if I can't get him in there for something, something fun. Uh, but stay tuned for Friday Night Lights. I'd love to make that you know series keep coming up every Saturday every Saturday morning uh, and blow that series out of the water and get a ton of views. So stay tuned for that. Again, check out the membership, uh, really. Uh, and also, it helps me out, okay? Uh, it's not so easy to monetize these days uh, with the YouTube and, and the NBA footage. Uh, and so it would help me out you know, a little bit greatly if you wanted to even do like the first tier, 99 cents a month, custom emojis, great stuff. It would really help. So anyway, I'll thank you guys for coming. This is great stuff. And... Um, I don't know. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back uh, the rest of the week. Was, you know, wreck all season. And thanks again. We'll be back. Uh, we'll do a live show uh, watch party f for everybody. Um, you know, in this coming week too. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eye on that community tab. I'll be uh, announcing things there. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown. We're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win. <laughs>